Hello, welcome to another video of CS106A, assignment 6, milestone 5. Finally, we're on the last part, and not a small part. It's a pretty, pretty uh, uh, big in terms of its algorithms and how to put things together. Um, basically, it's getting the, um, the draw function on the graph to actually work, so the graph itself plus the labeling and uh, all that good stuff, adding that to the uh, name surfer class. Okay, so let's go go ahead and get started. Basically, it's uh, basically what we need to do is finish the rest of the um, the coding for name surfer graph. Um, so we have to figure out what are we adding to the graph. Okay, we're gonna add entry values. We're gonna add the name, and we're gonna add the digits, the dates of you know the popularity for each for each uh, name. So if we want to do that, the easiest way to store that information on the name surfer graph of all the graphs that are going to that are going to be there is by using a, uh, an array list. So we take an array list, and it's array list of name surfer entries, and uh, let's call that the entry graph. Okay, and basically we just called it in our instance files, and then now we're going to go ahead and create. The actual part of it in our public name surfer graph split it in two like that because we want to create the array list when the name surfer graph gets created. So uh, name uh, entry graph is equal to new um, name no no it's an array list so new array list name surfer uh, entry. Okay, so once you create the array list for that, that should be just only the public surfer graph. The next thing that we want to do is to set up our next method. <coughs> so let's take a look at clear. Basically, we just want to clear the um, the list of name surfers that we put in. So that's pretty easy. We just go to entry dot, um, well, not entry, but rather entry graph because we just created that dot clear. Okay, and that will delete all the entries, the, all the elements of the array list, and then of course uh, we want to make sure that the graph shows up as brand new, so we're just going to hit update, and it's going to update the whole graph with none of the entries. Uh, the next thing is to add an entry. So when we um, go to our console, our, our program, and we enter a name and hit enter or you know hit the graph button, we're going to take that name surfer entry and we're going to store it into our name surfer graph. So to do that, all we're going to do is hit uh, entry graph, and we're going to add. We're going to add the entry from the name surfer class. Okay, just like that. And now for the big part. So here, when we update it, that's where we're also going to create the actual. Uh, lines and then labeling and all that stuff. So <coughs> let's start off by putting it after the remove all. We're going to put for int input is equal to zero. So we want to create a counter. Input's less than the number of entries. So we're going to hit entry graph dot size. Okay. Input plus plus. So the number of entries that we have on the graph and we're going to repeat this cycle over and over again. What we want to do is uh, when we go ahead and write that for loop, uh, we want to be able to draw the entry. So we're going to call draw the entry. And basically to draw the entry we need two things. We need the, the name surfer entry uh, object and we need the color that it's going to associate with. So color, we can simply use the input to to set our color. <coughs> so let's go ahead and put draw entry entry graph dot, and then since it's an array list, we hit get get the index, which is going to be our input comma input for the color. Oh, and this is the method call. And now we have to create the method. Okay. So outside of this public void update. Now uh, let's see there what happened here. Too many. There we go. And then create our method. So we're gonna call it a uh, private void because it's gonna execute itself. Draw entry 
and then we're going to take in the entry so it's the name surfer entry and called entry and we'll specify this as the color that we're getting as an input okay because um, <clears throat> it's spaced out and I really still haven't really figured out um, how to deal with that space in here <coughs> uh, other than to individually call in each method that's something I'm gonna have to think about but anyways uh, spacing is equal to we can say the get width it's probably something really easy I'm just not really thinking about it right now uh, decades and that would be to set our spacing for that matter and now let's work with the lines first so of course we're gonna have to use a for loop for this one we'll call it marker zero is equal to marker uh, how many times we're gonna do it uh, n decades times so n decades but because it doesn't go let's see one two three four five six seven eight ten eleven twelve um, <coughs> but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. But since the point is originally starting here, we don't need to go 12 times, we just need to go 11 times. And I'll show you why in a sec. Marker plus plus. Okay, so we created the uh, for loop to create the lines. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do is we're going to hit the new construction for the G line. So G line, line new g line and then what we're going to put for our x values is the spacing differences so spacing times by the marker that would be our x direction that's pretty simple and the next thing that we want to do here is go ahead and put our value for the y now it gets complicated to add that value in because the rank itself is out of a thousand and you need to make it into a fraction and you need to multiply it by the height that you have here to get a certain value. I could do that all here, but it'll be very messy. <laughs> Excuse me. So the best thing to do here is to um, write a method for it, right? It's all about making methods. So let's call this um, a vert value, vertical value, okay? And what we're going to put in here is the rank of the entry for wherever that marker is and what we're going to do is uh, instead of having all the spaces out there uh, let's go ahead and start it and make it so private uh, we're going to return a value of a let's see a double okay um, vert value and then input of an int it's going to be an int rank <coughs> okay so for our vert value what we need to do is um, we gotta figure out uh, how to create the algorithm to get that distance okay so this is interesting because there's an int and then we have a double so if you remember your int and double and your casting and all that stuff and how to do the order of operations as long as the double is first so double divided by the int it would still come out as a double okay if it was an int first it would come out as an int but if the double value divided by a int value, you're going to get a double answer. So here, let's create something, a variable called rank double, because we want it to be a double. Set that as the rank, okay? <clears throat> and then, um, as long as the rank is not a value of zero, and I'll show you why that's going to be the case, uh, we're going to say rank double is equal to the rank double divided by the max rank okay and that's from our instance variables here I think I named it right yeah max rank okay so max rank <clears throat> and then we're gonna go ahead and multiply our fraction uh, by the total you know height of, the, of that little frame right here and that is gonna be this part so we need to get the get height minus those two margins so there we go rank double um, <clears throat> times by the get height uh, minus the two times the uh, margins. <coughs> I don't know how to spell that, so margin size. Okay. Yeah, solid. All right. So once we do that, um, oops. Oh yeah, yeah. Once we do that, um, mm, instead of just having that distance right here. 
uh, and I got to put it as a line value for the y-coordinate, I'm going to add that margin back on. So rank double is equal to rank double, and you know, of course, you can add plus e instead, uh, plus the equal sign instead of you know doing that rank double equals rank. But I just like doing that uh, plus the graph margin size, okay? And that will give you the distance from the top here to where it's supposed to be on the graph. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Now, if the rank happens to be zero, then just simply just put rank uh, double is equal to the uh, to the what? What do I want to do? To get height minus the margin size because for zero values, they're going to end up at the bottom right here. So to do that, <coughs> we're going to go get height uh, minus the margin. Okay. So that would give you this value right there. <coughs> and of course, we're going to return it. So return our rank double. Okay. Now, we have the vertical value. So going back to here, we got the x value here, which is going to be this guy right here. We got the y value, which is going to be that guy right there. We need the x value again, except not for the uh, <coughs> not for the spacing plus times marker. But rather for the next one, for the next one over. So that would be uh, spacing times the marker plus one. So marker plus one will be the next space over, and our vert value will be the next vert value over. So that would be comma vert value this time the marker plus one, <coughs> like that. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Okie dokie. So I know, a lot of coding right there. Um, hopefully it makes sense to you. So basically, the space times marker rep is represented by this first spot right there. Vert value is the method that we created to give us the vertical value of that one's first spot. Our second one right here is a space marker plus one. That's going to end up being this end of the line right there and vert value of that entry at that spot. So, so far everything looks good. <coughs> uh, now we have to set the color. Color is also very important. Um, now the way they want you to set the color is by um, doing blue first, red, purple, and black. Okay. So to do that, um, let's take a look here. Um, easy, yeah, yeah. We gotta do it from within the for loop, otherwise it's not gonna get that color. So uh, if all right, I'll go with if color and modifier is equal to zero, because there's only four different colors, so modifier equals to zero. Then we'll say, let's see, what are we gonna say? What are we gonna say? Blue, right? So line dot set color is gonna be color dot blue. Okay. So why is that gonna? Oh. <laughs> Modifier 4. So this color is modifier of 4. Why are we modifying? Because there's going to be a choice of four colors. And if that happens to be a 0, that's going to be blue. Else if the modifier for the color is equal to 1, then we're going to say lines of color, I don't know, what do they want us to do next? Red is it? Yeah, red. Red. Okay, copy and paste. This will save you some time. Uh, else if this is 2, then this is going to be purple. Okay. Oh, purple does not work. Uh, magenta. Okay. Else if again, this is modifier of 3, then the last one is black. Okay. So once that's over and you set the color, make sure you add that line. And then you should be good. Now, <coughs> technically I could have trying to make a method about fixing the color and stuff, but it's kind of hard since this is a line, that an object of a line, and the one that we need to do later for a label is going to be an object of a label. So I decided just to, you know, write the methods for for the color separately for each one, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So once I get out of this for loop, what I need to do now is make the label for the dates and fix the color as well. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and set 4 into marker again since marker is already done and executed. Marker is less than the 
a uh, number of decades because we need 12 of them so decades <clears throat> and marker plus plus <coughs> now uh, in order to create the label we need to create the string first so we're going to say string and we're going to call it label entry and in this label entry we will initialize it and we'll say as long as entry rank get rank <coughs> marker so if that value as long as that value is not zero we're going to do it a certain way what way is that <coughs> well here's how we're going to do it the label entry of the string will be first started by the name okay and then we're going to add a space like that and then we'll add the actual value of the rank so entry dot <coughs> get rank and that would be the marker okay so that will be the label if the value is not zero if it is else if or just else then the label entry will simply just be just the name um, <coughs> plus a star that will represent the um, the, uh, the zero okay so that's how we make the string now we gotta add that string to the label so that would be g label and we'll call it the name label and then construct it so here's the construction for it go ahead and put our uh, label entry in there that's the string and now we gotta fix our uh, spacing and all that stuff so <clears throat> our x direction is gonna be the same x direction for the for the uh, line so we're gonna copy that space same times marker the y direction funny enough we can still use our vert, val vert values so vert value of that marker will be the y value here so that's cool we just use the same method for both of them okay um, the next thing that we got to do is set the color so this is what I was talking about the color would be um, you have to rewrite that code but thankfully copy and paste it right except it's not going to be line this time it's going to be name label oops let's fix that so name label name label name label and there you go uh, the last, last thing that you want to do is to add that name label okay just like that now once you add that name label are we done here well <coughs> let's take a look um, looks like everything is there so looking at the rest of the program I think there's nothing else to add here I think we're good um, now we just gotta go to name surfer and go ahead and add all that stuff so let's see um, we've already added the graph now we've gotta set the actions for each of them so what we're gonna do first is type in graph and then we're gonna do add entry and the add entry would be our entry for the name surfer entry and then we want to be able to update the graph. So graph dot update. Okay. Um, same thing. We want the same thing to happen when we hit return. So like that. And when we want to clear, we're going to hit uh, graph dot uh, clear. And after it clears, of course, we want the graph to update that so it looks, you know, brand new again. So once you do that, I think that's all we have to put there graph clear graph update okay let's try running it see how it works so name surfer we run this guy okay uh, I like mine to be a little bigger okay so then I hit Sam okay there you go Sam with the values and its ranks uh, Samantha there you go oh, very nice let's try my name Kai oh good it's gained in popularity um, I don't know Tiffany let's try lowercase Tiffany very nice. Now those are four colors and now it's got to cycle through blue again so let's try Jenny. There we go. Jenny. Roger. Okay so there you go. That's the solution for Name Surfer. If you have any comments uh, please like and subscribe and add those comments and if there's any other algorithms that you've been working on that may work or maybe if you have ways to fix my problems that I've been uh, having with that uh, spacing thing that would be cool. Leave it in the comments and uh, let me know. Alright, well thank you very much.